adding movie clips to our joke writing clips with the news headline practice topic of Trump trial felony conviction. We're now imagining we have our raw material, our rough drafts of jokes around our topic of interest, now adding other resources. In a prior presentation, we thought about the AI resources we could add, this time looking at movie and TV show clips. We can add basically memes, although we can add things a little bit longer than a meme possibly, which can spice up our joke script. Now remember, these are the things that kind of differentiate our skills on the online joke writing scene as opposed to in a stand-up comedy situation. Remember, in a stand-up comedy situation, most of the time you're dependent on the script and your acting skills, your delivery skills, in order to deliver the joke and make it funny. Oftentimes the stand-up comedians aren't the same people that can do the online stuff in part because the online stuff was difficult to manage before because we didn't have the tools that made it easier and in part because the person that's good at the stand-up acting situation often isn't the same person that is good at basically the editing process or possibly the art skills to make like comic uh, cartoons that might be in a Sunday paper or something like that. But... Now we have a situation where those funny ideas can be put on paper in a cartoon format more easily with the help and use of AI images that we thought about before. And we have editing software, which is way more intuitive and easy to use than we had before. So editing has become easier than ever. And we have years worth of great material on TV and movies, which people are now uploading all over the place as memes that we can now use and the fair use laws i think seems to me are becoming more reasonable and and easier to kind of deal with to so that we can add some of these items into our script so that's what we're doing now we have a rough draft of our jokes last time we added the ai images and now we're adding basically memes video clips for movies and uh tv shows and we often we always have to worry about kind of the fair use situation uh, with this. Remember that uh, whenever we pull in the, the movie and TV show clips, I don't want to get too much into the details of the fair use because you can find a lot of resources on it with people that are more knowledgeable than me. But the general idea is that if you're adding these things into your routine and you're building something new, and you're not just basically copying someone else's thing and that is your whole script, then that's the idea. As long as we're using it as a piece of a new creation, that's the idea of when it would be fair use as opposed to just replicating something that has happened uh, already. So to be in that fair use, basically, if you had smaller clips, it's more likely to be in the fair use. If you make the clip less than full size, it's more likely to be in fair use, which we might talk about later. You can also basically break up the clip to multiple scenes. You can also turn off if you don't have the sound and you just have the imagery, it's more likely to fit within the fair use because you're talking over it as opposed to using the text. Remember that music will often be the thing that gets you in a fair use problem. So if you have dramatic music in a movie scene, that's often gonna cause you a problem on uh, the fair use situation because of the movie, not really the talking so much in, in that situation. So those are just a couple things uh, to keep in mind as we go into this. The other thing we want to note is that we, we wanna be able to organize our ideas. So we thought about how we can seed our mind for our ideas to create the raw material of jokes that we can then build into a script, which is often the first problem people have because everybody has funny thoughts they just can't, they, we, don't, we don't organize them. And as an accountant, I'm here to, to, to help you sort out your stuff, your thoughts, so that you can put it down here and then build it in such a way that you're saving time uh, by being more efficient, by being a nerd and <laughs> actually building it like, a, like you're building a, a little, little tower or something, right? We're going to construct it in a systematic way which isn't cool. You're supposed to have the muse, man. You're supposed to just, the muse is supposed to hit you. Well, the muse can still hit you. Just write it down in an organized way 
when the muse hits you. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna we're gonna list out our jokes here, and then we can we we're then I'm gonna find my resources and put them into a folder that is tied to a specific joke topic and then number the resources in such a way that I can call them back. Again, I'm an accountant here. We need a numbering, <laughs> we need a numbering system so that we can call back to the jokes and the resources that we have related to those jokes. Now, also note that I've gotten some comments like, well, that's not, f- when are you going to make it funny? That's not funny. And I just, I just want to point out that at this point in time, There's a difference between seeing a joke for being a joke and seeing a joke as funny. In other words, you might hear a lot of jokes and not laugh at many of the jokes, but still recognize them as a joke because you could see the incongruity. So my goal here is to try to pick up topics so that we can see where we can insert incongruity making joke form. You might not like, you know, the jokes, but you can apply the same concept to whatever topic that you like or or in whatever style that you like it's the same kind of incongruity so that we can recognize that it's a joke structure we also might work more on the wording uh, of the jokes to make it more funny later these are just the raw material to say here's the incongruity here's how you build incongruity here's how you look for the joints in words so that you can see where incongruity can be introduced and then you can introduce that incongruity however you want right so that's going to be the idea so i'm going to the resources that we have one resource is this yarn tool to look up memes and whatnot this is the most straightforward one it's at g-e-t-y-a-r-n.oi i don't know how long this will be that's been up for a while and it just has movie clips and they're sorted in like five second intervals So if you go into any of these movie clips, then you just get a five second interval basically of a clip and then you can go back or forward, possibly looking for the whole bit around that particular topic. So this is the easiest place to look up things. So for example, if I was to go into this, to this one, I can then right click and cut and save this clip and it'll save like that five minute clip. I can go back to the previous bit So it kind of shows the movie, the whole movie. I don't even know if it's the whole movie, but the whole scene back and forward clip by clip. And that's cool because if you add just one clip, you're probably within the fair use area. If you add like four clips, then you're getting a fairly long bit and you have to worry more about the fair use situation. If you have multiple clips because you like the scene that you're looking at and you like the whole thing, there was a good joke in there that mirrors what you're talking about. You might break it up so that you have part of it at the beginning of your script and part of it at the end, which acts kind of like a callback, which I'm sure many people would call as that's cheap. You're like using someone else's stuff that's better than yours and so on and so forth. But it works kind of just from a logistic standpoint. It's kind of cool because it calls back, right? So it's almost like having a built-in callback as you have the other bit that's in there. It also might give you ideas about how you might reconstruct your joke. So in other words, the other thing I want to mention is that we built these seed jokes and then you could take these seed jokes, build them into a script as though you're going to do it in just a straight stand up comedian situation, working on the wording to make it good enough just for like a stand up bit or uh, and then and then add the other resources like AI art and movie clips on top of that. Or it might be and that's what we're doing here. We're saying Let's keep it at the raw material and then look up the AI art and movie clips and some of the some of the stuff that I would not have originally added into my bit might be worthwhile to add into my script if I find a really funny image or I find a really funny clip. And if I find a really funny clip that has a bit that's already been done around my topic, then I might be able to repurpose that and get some more ideas on what direction I want my script to go in. In other words, any of these seed ideas that I have here, I could, I think you, a good storyteller can grow that into an entire script, right? You could, you could just keep on building on the initial root story and build into a script and you might get ideas of doing that by looking at other people's bits around the same thing with the concept or theory that the history doesn't exactly repeat 
but it rhymes. Someone has said before. I don't know who I forget, but <laughs> so that means that you're gonna. It's kind of neat that you can have a callback to something that happened in the past, which is like, whoa, that happened like way back when. It's in black and white, but it kind of looks like it applies to this current situation, and you have the same joke that you're basically calling it back to the current situation, which I think is kind of neat uh, and can fit, even though. In my case, a lot of people don't know the movies I'm talking about anymore because I'm not the new the younger generation doesn't know the movies that I thought were funny in my generation, which probably weren't all that funny. That just happened to be the movies that were in my generation, but I thought they were funny. So in any case, that's going to be the idea. So this first one, uh, here's the here's the setup. So uh, the term president is used, which explicitly refers to someone holding or having held a high government position. Now, these are political jokes. Most of them, I'm, I'm more conservative, are, are going to lean tilt towards that side again. If that bothers you, or then you don't have to, you don't have to agree with me to see the joke construction. I just think the political jokes are funny. I know that political jokes offend people, but but I feel kind of feel like politics are in everything. You can't even watch a Disney movie without politics shoved down your throat. So if you're kind of taking the perspective of I'm not political. I'm I'm apolitical. I think you're kind of kidding yourself. So you might as well laugh at it. And it, as my opinion, but but you know you can apply the same thing to any kind of joke construction that you that you want, and that's fine. So the term president is used. So we could say he is actually president of something stupid, right? So we're going to say we're going to uh, refute that premise. That's the incongruity with a story. And so, yeah, president, yeah, like president of a clown club or something like that is going to be our idea. So now we're going to say, OK, then I could look up terms here such as you're not a president or you're you're the president of the clown people or something like that. A snarky kind of remark that most likely has been in some kind of movie or TV show and see if I can find it here. Also noting that you could look for it in other resources there's a lot of movie tools to just look up scripts. And once you find the script, you could then find the movie either on your actually uh, streamer, Disney or, or Netflix or Amazon or whatever, or try to find it on YouTube. See if the scene uh, is in uh, YouTube. Remembering that if you get it from like a streaming platform, then you're going to have to find where it is in the streaming platform and then if you're going to record it using software, sometimes it tries to block you. So you have to adjust your settings possibly, which I don't want to get into in detail here. There's a lot of resources on that. So it seems to me it's you're able to do it and you should be within fair use if you're using it as a mean, meaning you're using a small bit of it and so on and so forth and what on, whatever. But that's the idea of that. So, so this one, I looked it up here and I came up with this. And so this is... So he's the leader of the Decepticons, so I just thought that that might fit. Leader Scourge, leader of the Decepticons. So now this, so that's, this is the one I actually looked up. Leader or something, you're a leader or something like that. You're not a leader, da, da, da. And then, and, and that, and then I went back to the last one and said, well, maybe the story on the first one might fit too. So then I numbered them 5001 and 5002. If I just use those two clips, it's probably still small enough not to run into like fair use kind of issues. So then I numbered them here and I made them red so that I can then call it back to that particular joke and not read the numbers when I'm doing the script. I'm not going to pull a Joe Biden. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you a joke. President. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Like president of the retarded clown club 10 10 5 0 0 1 5 0 0 2 see i don't you don't want to do that you don't want to read that it makes you it might make you look stupid and i look stupid i've looked stupid enough that's why i don't put my picture on the on the the youtubes i'm i try not to look more stupid most of the time so i don't read so don't read that it makes you look dumb so then we got the legal judgment convicted suggests a legal process that has concluded so Obviously, if we say Trump was convicted, blah, 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 it assumes that he he was um, that there was a legitimate legal process. We can refute that with a story. So the opposite of that would be, no, it wasn't a fair legal process and then come up with a story that would say that. 
Again, in political humor, you're insinuating something that you think is true with exaggeration. If it was slapstick or something, you're just trying to create a story which would make that premise false. And that destroys the image in someone's fa head, which makes it incongruity and funny. Right? So the evidence for that case is about as reliable as Hillary Clinton gathering up her emails. So I'm just trying to do a comparison now saying, yeah, that case was about as as reliable as the evidence on, you know, Hillary Clinton's email case or something like that, right? Not the greatest joke, but if I add an, if you could see the incongruity and the comparison, and then if I add Hillary, uh, that could make it more funny. And then I was trying to think, I found a scene that was in The Simpsons. And I was like, hey, let me think about this scene and looked it up on YouTube. And this is, and it was this scene where, Bart was getting set up <laughs> by the mobsters that he was the he was the bad guy, right? So and then I and then I put the timestamp at 22. So now I can go to that and I can go, okay, 22 is right duh, 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 here. So if I was to then copy this, 180 years. Thank God we live in a country so hysterical over crime that a ten. Hey. Forgive me, Don Bartholomew. We tried to stop the kid, but he wouldn't quit. It was like you went crazy. So, so they're blaming they're blaming the little kid for he's the he's the one. It wasn't us. It was the little kid <laughs> that did the thing. Institution, so, loan shocking numbers. The kid liked the wet his beak and everything. The kid liked the wet his beak and everything. So I thought that was a pretty funny satirical thing that already has a joke line through it, which I think if I was trying to mock and mockingly represent the the hypocrisy in the political system where you're they're basically trying to convict Trump when it looks like the Biden if anything the Biden family seems to be to look more like these mobsters than the Trump family and like it looks like my my like unprofessional opinion so that's why that's why I think that incongruity and once I saw that then I can say well that clip was a little long I think that whole skit could actually tie into what I'm doing here so now that I got that idea, I might, if I was to write my skit, that might change how I construct my joke structure. And then I might break this whole thing into bits that I can add into along the way uh, with my joke as I mirror my, my joke to, uh, to this bit that, that they did, right? So that's one way that you might, that, that might help you out there. And also then I'm just gonna put it in here as the URL, so I just copied the URL, which you can right click and copy the URL and then paste it here. And then I put the timestamp around where I want to actually go to that video clip. All right, next one, uh, type of crime. A felony indicates a serious crime more severe than a misdemeanor. So in other words, if you say he's been convicted of 34 felony counts, then you obviously we typically think, wow, a felony. If I if I if someone says someone's a felon, I'm thinking I better, you know, lock my door or something right like that. But and so I'm going to break that assumption, though, and say, well, may, apparently felony's not that bad because because he got a felony for something stupid. Right. So I'm not really scared of someone that got a felony because they they <laughs> didn't pick up the dog crap you know, or something, like, you know, something silly. So now, so he got a felony conviction for jaywalking. Well, I'm not really, do I really need to lock my door because the dude crossed the street without, without permission? I don't know if that's, if that's uh, <laughs> going to worry me too much. So, wow. So I thought, so, so I thought a felony was like a real thing. Apparently now you can get a 34 counts of them for miscalculating, calculating your travel expense under meals and entertainment. So I'm basically just saying, and that is kind of mirroring what he got in trouble for. He basically, I guess he recorded something, his legal fees under the line item of legal fees, as opposed to saying, these are for my, my presidential campaign or something like that, which doesn't seem like they were for in the first case, if a legal campaign, he was paying off the legal fee, he was paying his lawyer. So from a bookkeeping perspective, I'm like, oh, that's a little scary here. The guy got 34 counts of felony for miscalculating, for miscategorizing something as as mundane as like miscategorizing travel expenses to meals and entertainment, it seems like. And that was the comparison. So then I was like, 
can I think of a clip that would fit that? And I was thinking then someone getting a ticket for something stupid. And I thought of Demolition Man, uh, where this guy, <laughs> this guy goes into the future and it's, there's this, it's like a woke future. So this is another one that kind of mirrors the reality that some places and we're at in America or in some areas, right? Where it's like, you get in trouble for the silliest thing that like 20 years ago, it's like, that would be written. So this guy is a swear word and they keep giving him a ticket. Noun. Noun. So let's see if he, it was over here. I don't want to have him swear. See, I didn't put the right timestamp on it. So here he goes. How? You are fined one credit for a violation of the verbal morality standard. So, <laughs> so I thought, I thought that might fit, you know. In the, so that, so, so that might fit, even though this guy is an actual felon. But I thought the idea that in the movie, you know, actually he's probably, I think he had some tax issues <laughs> in real life. But anyway, I thought that might fit in the routine, and so then I copied and pasted here. I probably should have put the the link. Uh, the number on it and uh, so that I can find it easily. So then the next one, so due process. Uh, so, so the convicted implies that a legal process took place. So if you say he was convicted, then you would assume that there was the proper legal process. So the due process was not done properly. That would be the breaking of the assumption that we can try to do with a, with a story. So wow, due process in this country has, been, has become due-due process. Uh, process. So nothing about the process of this case looked normal. So I'm just trying to do a play on words indicating there was no due process because now they turned it into do due process. So then I found some clips on this 5040. Uh, so I looked up over here and I looked up a uh, do due process and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is what I found. Now, this one what did I what did I come up with? 5040. 5040, this one. What's lose bowel control? What's lose bowel control? And then he says That's a scientific term for crapping your pants. Now now this happened to happen uh when like Biden had that incidence where it really looked like he's crapping his pants at a ceremony. And so I thought that would be a pretty good, you know, compare that that is something that could clearly be a running gag. Uh, if you're trying to insert it in to like the falling apart of like the legal process, right? The legal process has become doo-doo process. And then you show an image of Joe Biden at that ceremony. Uh, if you know what I'm talking, you can look it up. If you, and then you could, and that might uh, work as a running gag. So I found a bunch of these related to doo-doo, right? So you, you crapped your pants, basically. So then obviously there's a gr lot of great material out there about movies and scripts where someone crafts their pants. So you can find some good stuff. So then I found some more on there and I just numbered them, all of those, so that I can go back and then if I wanna find a running theme, I can add those to my, to my script somewhere. So that's just to point out that my numbering system over here doesn't necessarily have the same numerical order on this side because because in this case, I looked up a bunch of stuff that I thought might work and then I wanted to number it before I added it to my script. And then maybe I'm going to think about where it fits best in the script later, possibly adjusting the script to fit, you know, the new gag that kind of came in that might be a good running theme. So there was not sufficient evidence for conviction. That would be uh, so if he was convicted, we assume there's sufficient evidence. So we can then say the opposite of that assumption would be there wasn't sufficient evidence that would break, that would give the incongruity. Then we come up with a story about the incongruity. Wow, convicting on such skimpy evidence is like, like executing somebody for, for being a witch because they, they float in water. So I was trying to do a comparison of this, the evidence you came up with is as ridiculous as murder as as executing someone for the crime of being a witch based on the evidence of some of she can float in water and my thought process there was the old monty python skit where they did this whole routine of the witch floating in water so i looked that up on the youtubes and there it was it's easy to easy to find so then i can when i'm constructing my editing 
I can easily add that little clip in there uh, in the editing process, which maybe we'll talk about later. And I just added this URL, so let's go to that one. So then I, I said it was at 34 here. So then I'm just gonna say, all right, here's the bit. Witch, I'm not a witch. But you are dressed as one. They dress so she's like, I'm not a witch, but you're dressed as one. Like this. I'm trying to talk in between it here. This is another way that you can kind of hopefully not get the fair use problem because I'm using it from an educational standpoint. And if you stop it and talk in between it, then you're less likely to have a fair use issue. <laughs> Well, well, we did do the nose. The nose? <laughs> well, we did do the nose, you know. So, anyways, this whole bit goes on for some, <laughs> for some time, and they end it, and they end it where they're gonna, they're, they want to, they want to, they weigh her over here <laughs> to see if she's lighter than a chicken or something, and then they want to see if she floats in water, and it's all pretty absurdly ridiculous and kind of funny, and again, one of those that I think could be like an idea for a running gag if we're comparing that gag to the court system. It's like, this is what your court system looks like. You look like, you're, you look like this thing that you're trying to put this, put this witch in an execution for being a witch because she doesn't float in water and weighs less than a chicken in a scale that doesn't, you know, you can go. But uh, anyway, so the president likely had an opportunity to defend themselves. So again, the, the premise of he was convicted would be in an American system, we would assume that he had the ability to defend himself. So we can, so the opposite of that, to break that assumption would be he didn't have the ability to defend himself, which we can then try to present with a story. And again, I'm not trying to really, in a political situation, note that I'm trying to indicate, yeah, it wasn't really fair that, and then exaggerate that. But again, in a, I'm sorry, I'm saying again all the time, I'm going to stop that. If you were talking about something that's slapstick or something like that, then all you're trying to do is find the incongruity and make a story that makes the assumptions incorrect. You're going to say, well, that's wrong because you, you're missing the setup. I'm revealing the reason why your assumption that is completely normal for you to make giving the setup is wrong because of this added information, this part of the story. So in our case, uh, the court case was like a trial by combat uh, where they sent a guy out to fight 20 lions naked, hands behind his back, only able to pathetically wield a small, scared, shriveled mace by shrinking, I should say, his small, shriveled, uh, his small, shriveled mace. I had something, uh, meat mace. I was going to small, shriveled meat mace <laughs> by shaking his hips in defense. So then I tried to look up... Uh, uh, someone that's fighting lions. So I tried to look up over here, fighting lions, right? Or, or a gladiator fighting lions. And I, uh, surprisingly, I didn't find as much. You would think that would be something <laughs> they put in the movies all the time because it seems pretty dramatic and whatnot. But uh, I found then on the YouTubes, the gladiator fighting the lions. So I picked up this one. So then I put where I wanted to go. It was at 115. And then I'm like, okay, here's this guy's fighting. It's not a lion. But, you know, they're here. It, it's at least, a, at least someone's fighting out there, and he's got weapons, and so it doesn't fit perfectly. But, and it's not a lion, but, you know, a tiger, a tiger, right? That's what that is. But, you know, I thought that might, you know, you might find something in there that can fit uh, within the script that might work. So I added that one. So a court or judicial body had the authority to convict. So if you say he was convicted, the assumption is the court had the judicial authority to do so, which the opposite of that assertion would be the court did not have the authority to convict, which would be the incongruity. Then we can make up a story as to why that would be the case. That would be so. So is just just me or was the convicted of a felony charge in a state court without the power to do so by a judge who abandoned proper due process in instructing the jury. So I'm basically saying, you know, it was out of the court due process. The court had about as much authority to convict Trump as a white shark convicting a dog owner of abuse for not picking up the dog's crap fast enough. So I'm, now I'm trying to undermine the authority 
by saying, hey, look, they didn't have authority. They had about as much authority as, and then you come up with some ridiculous story where there's a lot of hypocrisy involved. A white shark, which is like, I was imagining that they eat, they eat, you know, sea dogs in the terms of, and then, and then, then that's like the, the, the judge, right? So that's kind of a weird story, but I thought the AI image helped with it. And then I was going to look up a white shark eating a seal, but that's not very funny. It turns out <laughs> I looked at it. I was like, that's not very funny. That's kind of sad. So, <laughs> so then I was looking for another image. I found this one and I did a, another one on this Simpson case. So I thought this one fits into their well again, where I have this running theme of these mobsters in this Simpsons case that basically are blaming their whole criminal racketing on Bart Simpson, like an eight year old or something, which so so the hypocrisy there is what I'm trying to point out as a mirror to the hypocrisy here. Right. That would be the that would be the comparison. You may or may not agree with that, but I'm just saying you see you see the joke structure and then I'm trying to just find a clip that kind of mirrors that, which there will probably be many for most scenario setups that can at least parallel the thing that you're talking about, which is fairly easy to look up oftentimes because you could just find the key terms and the search engines these days are thus that it is a little easier to find. So loss of credibility, the conviction might lead people to doubt the president's integrity. So if he's convicted of a felon, if, if you were convicted, if I was convicted of a felon or something like that, people might not trust me so much, you know, uh, but the, I, the reverse of that is to say they won't lose credibility and then come up with a story of why that would be the case, possibly because the, the term felony, felony doesn't seem to hold the same weight when you apply it in frivolous ways, right? It's like, it's like, it's just like calling everybody Hitler. You're Hitler. It doesn't really have any effect when half the like 90 percent of the country is now is now equivalent to Hitler, according to like certain like the, the news media or something. It's like that doesn't really <laughs> think you've, you might have overused. It's, it's like it's like when someone says it's awesome. That's the other word. It's awesome. I you know, you go over the top with awesome. You have to come up with a new word at some point because it's lost its meaning. I use it's awe inspiring and then some it's not just awesome. It's awe inspiring and then some. That's what I'd say. Any case. So if we change the story, the conviction led people to doubt the legal system. So now we're trying to adjust the implicit assumption of the doubting will be on Trump. We're no, we're saying no doubt will happen, but it's on the legal system. I doubt I'm now doubting that a felon in each charge is something to worry about. I'm doubting that someone being a felon means anything anymore. <laughs> right? So honestly, where has the justice gone? I don't know about you, but I ain't, it ain't in the Manhattan criminal court, right? That's going to be the idea. I found 5050. So that's going to be this one, 5050. So I looked up justice or there's no justice, I think, something like that. And now I'm starting to doubt everything you said. So, okay, I'm starting to doubt everything you say. So I said, so my idea would be there was, uh, I'm doubting the word justice now, not Trump. I'm doubting the word felony, right? And so then I looked up over here, I'm doubting what you say or something like that. I said, I doubt, I'm starting to doubt you. I'm starting to have doubts. And then I looked up multiple things and that's the one I found uh, with that search, I think. So then we had uh, this one. There's likely significant public interest in reaction to this event. So there would be public interest. So the assumption is if it's a news headline, there's public interest in the event. The opposite of that would be, well, no, there's not public interest in the event. And then we come up with a story to say why that would be the case. So why would that be the case? Well, why would the public react? We see how the Democrats play ball. The only pitch they got is to throw the ball right at your head and then pay off the umpire to call it a strike. Uh, luckily, their arm is so weak, they can only throw 50 miles an hour. So I'm just trying to paint a picture of a story where people don't really care. You call them a felon. This guy's a felon. Yeah, well, according to you, everybody that everybody that that runs against you in a Democratic political campaign is a felon. That's like half the country for crying out loud. 
Uh, let me guess, is he Hitler too? Is he is he Hitler and a hell? <laughs> pretty anyway, so that's gonna be eleven. So that one is this one five zero six zero that I found. D -d 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 here. Who cares? Oh. So so that one I couldn't so the only thing the phrase I looked up was who cares, right? So it's saying, hey, Trump is a felon. And in, in the idea, and now I'm looking for something. My script is saying basically, who cares? Because you have, you have the uh, the term felon is the same as the term awesome. Now they're meaningless. You have to come up with a new f term, like he's a super bad felon or something like that. Just like I did with awesome, which is now awe inspiring and then some. That's got a better ring to it. So in this one, political ramifications, the conviction could have serious political consequences for the presidential party. So the assumption he's convicted of a fel of 30 some felonies, it's gonna impact his party. The adverse to that would be, there will be no si significant consequences or they will be positive. So we can try to go to that implicit assumption that the consequences, notice they didn't define negative or consequence, or positive, you can say, yeah, there's gonna be consequences. They're gonna be good for crying out loud. They see the corruption that's, ha so that would be the undermining the incongruity. So yeah, there will be ramifications. The public will finally realize the current emperor has no clothes. So I'm just trying to come up with a story now to say the incongruity, which is breaking the assumption that it will be negative by saying it's positive, by saying they're gonna, the, the assumption is going on the, on Biden, not on Trump, right? That's gonna cause him negative. So that's the idea. So again, you might not agree with that politically, but you see the construction here. And then, well, actually he does have clothes, but they have been seriously soiled. So again, it's kind of hard not to, at this point in time, keep going back to the soiling of the clothes. The emperor's got no clothes. Well, possibly because he crapped himself and he had to take his clothes off because everybody was just, <laughs> It was was annoyed about it. And then we could find, of course, 11. Now, now I have all these other ones that I found over here uh, related to to that 10 five zero one zero. I found this one. And these are the ones I found related to crapping yourself. There's a bunch of them. Did you did you just crap your diaper? <laughs> so, so and then this second bit was funny. I got scared when the door closed. I got scared. So, and and that one, uh, it, that one might be funny or easy to actually put Joe Biden's head on it, right? <laughs> Did you just crap it like Joe Biden's? Like I got scared when the door closed. So you and you can, <laughs> or something like that. All right. So so and then I also found this bit with it. Now, the emperor has no clothes. You would think that would be something you could find, like if you did a search, the emperor had no clothes, but I didn't find anything great on yarn. And then I was thinking back to, to when they did that in a bit. And I, and I remember this Robin Hood bit in the old Robin Hood uh, cartoon before Disney went lame. And then he, so he's got his king with his, because they stole his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought that was kind of I thought that would fit there pretty well. I thought that was funny. It was back when Disney was once Disney was once great, honestly. They weren't always this way. Things weren't always this way before the dark times, before the before the the whatever. Historical recall. So this event uh would be notable part of the presidential history. So we're gonna, the assumption will be 34 counts of felony. This is gonna go down in history. And so we can try to break that assumption by saying, well, yeah, it's gonna go down in history. It's gonna go down in history. It's worse than Watergate for crying out loud. And again, the assumption there being, well, it's not on Trump. It's gonna go against his opponent for weaponizing the legal system. That, so I'm trying to twist that, which again, you may or may not agree with that, but that's the idea. So then, so, so honestly, if it's still remember Watergate, so then I have this one 5070. So 5070 that I found. Back in my day, people took trains. So the, and, that, and that one doesn't fit perfectly, but I just thought it was back like, because I said back in my day. And so I looked for something that said back in my day and, and an old guy saying, saying that. And so that's what I found. May or may not be worthwhile, but I looked that up and thought, eh, that might fit.
media coverage, the event would attract uh, extensive media coverage. So that would be the assumption we make. It's going to attract uh, media coverage. Uh, and the other side of that would be, well, it wouldn't attract media coverage, then create a story why that would be the case. Yeah, it will attract media coverage. Dang, hacks will, will disparage whoever George Soros has put on the hit list. In other words, I'm just trying to say, yeah, it's going to attract media coverage, but for the wrong reason, not because we've convicted a felon and they're getting on that to, to show the people the corruption. No, they are the corruption and they got paid to do the hit job by George Soros, right? And again, I'm not really hitting on George. I don't know. I'm not trying to make a conspiracy theory. I'm just trying to say that would be the second story that you can kind of make. And then I found this bit on that one. So this is the old job of the hut. And, and I just thought that, you know, it would, he, he's a criminal mob boss in the, old, in the old Star Wars. So I thought that that might fit, you know, as him talking to a bounty, and then he's gonna talk to a bounty hunter over here with, you know, so I thought that that might fit as, you know, like a, like, and you could even, when he's talking to the bounty hunter, you could even put like the face of a, of a news reporter on the bounty hunter talking to Jabba Hut or Jabba the Hut paying him off. 1,000 to hit, to hit, to do the hack job, you know, or something like that. International uh, reaction. Other nations might react uh, formally or informally. So in other words, if he's, if our president was convicted, other countries are going to look down on us is the assumption that is going to be made. And then the alternative that would that would be no, they wouldn't. Or the implicit assumption here being we should care about that. And you can break that assumption and say, well, why would I care what the Europeans think? They're crazier than we are, would be the normal reaction that you can make incongruent. And then with a story, normally I would say, who cares what the Europeans think? But these days, I think they're, they're getting less crazy woke than we are. A sure sign we need to right the ship. Honestly, if we need to take lessons in common sense from the French, we're in serious trouble. So then I tried to look something up where, the Fr where a French... And so again, I'm not trying to pick on the French, uh, particularly. I, I mean, I am, but <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a joke. Plus the French worked uh, right because it worked well here with sense and French kind of has some alliteration. So I looked up the Pink Panther, which which is this detective <laughs> that's there always no doing need stupid for you to things. Speak unless I ask you a question. What is your name? I'm Shulk, the gardener. And what is it you do? I'm the gardener. And why didn't you say that to me in the first place? I did. Look, don't try to be funny with me, monsieur. This is a very... <laughs> So, so this whole thing, I thought, you know, you could pick something in from something from the Pink Panther and it's going to be, it's got to be funny because, you know, that was a funny show. So then we've got our movie or whatever. So this, this sets a legal political precedent regarding handing high profile cases. That would be an assumption. The breaking of that assumption, it has not set precedent or maybe uh, it does in a different way. So I'm going to say it sure does set a precedent regarding presidential convictions and it's not a good one. The new president, anything goes, it's like a reality TV show. So I'm trying to basically say, you create a story that's saying the new president precedent is to, is to basically make the White House like a reality TV show. And then I'm thinking Jerry Springer's was the worst one back uh, when I was, okay, so, so I if I look up a Jerry Springer fight on like 59, this was just a horrible show. See, so like the guy's actually moving the table away just so he can have his guests fight. And here's the bouncer, right? And then they, so it's like, and then they're going to go at it. It's like, <laughs> and then, so I'm thinking yeah, <laughs> you could have like even faces on that, you know, you know, Joe Biden and Donald Trump on the faces uh, <laughs> or something like that with a Jerry Springer show and possibly put this bit in front of like a White House scene that you can create in an AI image and say, what is going on with the White House these days? This is not how things are supposed to be operating. I don't think this is. And the next one, responses might vary widely across political lines. So uh, legal ap appeals, the possibility of an appeal of further legal action is implied. So in other words, we're assuming if he was convicted of felony convictions, then he might have an appeal process. So there's not, so the opposite of that would be, there would be a, 
no possibility for appeal or possibly the appeal will be done differently, not through the legal process, but to the people. So I'm going to convert that implicit assumption that the appeal is going to be a legal appeal. The real appeal is going to be to the people and the voter and the voting. So, so that's my story. So, there, so there's not just possibility for appeal. There's a strong possibility for a Paul. So that's, I'm basically just doing a play on word here. The only appeal that matters at this point is the appeal by the people driven by the people's appall. That would be the construction of, of the joke to say there's going to be appeal to them, so on. And then 5080, I looked up this one and found this. Oh, the voters will decide that in November. So all I looked up was the voters will decide or the people will decide in yarn. And then I, and I, and I thought I'd find a lot more. But it said this guy, he's saying the Simpsons, the people will decide that in November. And so and that's basically all I've done thus far. But that's the that's the general idea. Once I have these, then I can look at this whole joke as well as the A.I. and as well as the video clip. And then maybe maybe that will help me to think how I'm going to construct my whole script so that I can pull this bits into it and then kind of reword it and have my same uh, clips that I can kind of put in there, possibly tailoring my joke a little bit to better fit the AI tools as well as the video clip and to make it a better, more descript and finite story with the punchline of the story as close to the end of it as possible, which is typical kind of joke uh, construction.